I want to welcome Kaz Growla to uh, Rivalry Family Media. I'm Bill Thomas, your Motorsports Insider. It's my pleasure to be joined by Kaz today. He's got a new adventure in the Xfinity Series after eight years, a long eight-year journey. But uh, this year, Kaz, it's really all coming together. Sam Hunt Racing, full-time Xfinity Series ride in the number 26 uh, with a, a, a solid sponsor behind you for at least 16 of the of the 32 race schedule, I believe it is. But uh, I'm sure more will be coming on board. You got a lot to work with. Uh, well, tell me, what's been going on? What's new? <laughs> well, it's been a busy off season. It's uh, it's been very much off from the racetrack, but very much on from uh, the the getting ready standpoint. You know, there's there's a lot that goes into being ready when you do get to the racetrack. So um, it's been a very long time since I've had the chance to actually spend an off season getting ready to run for a championship. Um, been since well, it would have been 2016, the last off season, because I ran the truck series uh, full time in 2017. Um, but that's actually been my only season ever full time at the national level in NASCAR. Um, so that that feels like it was just yesterday and a lifetime ago at the same time. Um, but I do know I was just freshly 18 years old, um, as young as I could be full time in the truck series. And what I know now, what I've learned since then uh, is so, so much, much greater than, than what I knew at the time. And I feel like I, I've got a really, really good chance to, to capitalize on, on a full-time opportunity this year. I think it's the right time for me. Yeah. Well, you've definitely been patient. You know, you were riding that career rocket back then, uh, you know, uh, as a 17 year old hooking up with a major truck team and getting those uh, starts uh, on the short tracks and, and then coming out of the gate with that uh, win down in Daytona, the, uh, at uh, the 250, the next uh, was next gen energy or something like that. 250. I'm sure you got a trophy, the trophy right there that you look at as often as you can. <laughs> I knew it right there, <laughs> and uh, I was in the stands for that. It was a great, uh, a great time. But uh, yeah, you, you know, you had the chance at one other win that year. But uh, 2018, uh, you know, uh, that rocket kind of fizzled out. But uh, here you are now. Let's talk about what you got coming up this this season, and then we can look back on that. Uh, you know, later on in the program, you got this, you got a test tomorrow, uh, from what I understand, uh, coming up for the, the opening season race down at Daytona or a, a week and a half, uh, now about, about a month from now, actually. But, uh, I show you it's circled and it's penciled in, but I'm sure you're really looking forward to this test tomorrow to really get you, get your feet on the ground and get running here for this coming season. Yeah, definitely. You know, I, I did get the chance to work with the number 26 team at Phoenix to end the year last year. So we've got a little bit of experience working together so far. I'd say all positive so far. Um, that was a good weekend. We had good speed. We ended up getting caught up in someone else's mess around stage two in that race. So we didn't get a great finish. But um, I definitely think that that we could we could tell just from that weekend that that we've got some great potential for this year. Um, and, and tomorrow will be just another opportunity to get to work together ahead of the season. And it's, it's actually been a really long time since I've gotten to test a race car that I'm actually going to be racing. Um, so that, that will be a little bit different for me. I'll, I'll get to knock the off season rust off a bit. And, um, it should be a really good warm up for, for the season starting at Daytona, because usually how it goes is you go to Daytona. The team will typically let you run one lap in practice by yourself just to make sure nothing feels off with the car. Um, then you go, you make a one lap qualifying run and you take the green flag in the middle of a pack um, after three months of not being behind the wheel. And that can be that can be a little hair raising, just kind of knocking the rust off from the off season at 200 miles an hour on lap one in the middle of a pack at Daytona. Um, that's that'll definitely wake you up. So uh, this will be good to kind of get get in the flow of things and get working together. Just um, you said a month from now is Daytona, but honestly, what is? I think it's it's like two weeks, two and a half weeks. If it, it's 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 going to be here really soon. And February February eighteenth. <laughs> I yeah. think it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got. You. I'll so, be down there. I got. I got my plane fare and tickets. So I'll, I hopefully I'll see you down there. But yeah, February eighteenth. Perfect. Perfect. So we're inside of three weeks and um, there's still a lot to do between now and then this test will be a, a, a really good thing for us. So um, that should be fun in our car. We're going to have um, 
Tyler Reddick run a couple of laps because he'll be racing with the team a few times this year. Um, Connor Mosack and I will split the rest of the time in the car in tomorrow's test because he's going to be driving um, as my teammate for many races this season. Um, so SHR will have just the one car there tomorrow for the test. Uh, but it should give me plenty of, of laps behind the wheel and get a chance to kind of feel this thing out for for the first time this year and then try to go try to go points racing in a few weeks. I tell you, with everything going on, and let's make it clear, SHR is Sam Hunt Racing, not Stuart Haas <laughs> Racing, uh, but uh, a, a, an up-and-coming organization, much like you. They've only been uh, in the series since uh, 2019 full-time, I believe, and they, they've run mostly a one-car operation, but a turn style of drivers over the past couple of years, including Tyler Reddick and, uh, uh, not Tyler, but uh, um, a number of uh, – uh, John Hunter, Hunter Nemechek, uh, you know, from the Gibbs organization, a number of uh, uh, up and coming drivers, but nothing steady and nothing full time. Them going to you after one race uh, to end the season, you know, talk about a little bit about how that developed in the Sam Hunt racing organization in general. Yeah, we were actually um, already in talks about this season prior to to Phoenix last year, and we actually ended up signing the full time contract for this year at Phoenix um, for the race weekend. So um, that was nice. By the time I took the green flag at Phoenix, I already knew that that was going to be my ride for the for the whole year this year, which um, it was it was definitely a, a weight off my shoulders because you know I've been working at this for many, many years. And you said I was on a rocket ship. I was, I was moving quickly, full-time in this, full-time in that, winning this, winning that. Um, but you get, you get a certain number of levels up in, in this high to the top and the, the budgets are so high for these race teams. It costs a lot to do what we do. Um, and sponsorship is such a crucial part of that. Um, so I, it took me a few years to kind of find my footing and try to, try to get, get connected with the right group of people, the right company, the right sponsor to, to kind of help me take that next full-time step. Um, and finally last year, second half of the year, everything kind of fell into place and started clicking, um, with these different brands. One of which we, we announced a, a week or two ago, uh, Island brands USA, um, their, their line of beer products. Um, and then as well as their, um, their other beverage crush will be on, on my car for a total of 16 races. Um, we've got another really fun brand that I think people are going to absolutely love that we're actually announcing on Tuesday. Um, so keep your eyes peeled this week. Uh, they're gonna, they're gonna be a 10 race sponsor for us. So our season is pretty close to filled up sponsorship wise. And we've got some things in the works for the other races. So, um, so we'll be totally covered this year. And, um, that, that really is, is what's allowed me this chance for, for this season to be able to drive full time. And, um, it's been a grind for many years, but I feel like that's made, that's made this so much more worth it. So much sweeter in the end to get here, because back when I was 18 years old, I love driving race cars. I always have, but you know, when you're, when you're that young and you've always been doing it, you somewhat take it for granted. You just think, well, oh, this is what I do. I'm going to be doing this. Well, I, I've learned to do this for a living is, is a lot harder than, than you think. And I, I suppose if it was easier then everyone would be a race car driver, but um, it, it takes a lot to come together. Um, and, and I, I had to learn that the hard way, but I, I think the right way. So I'm, I'm excited about what's ahead. Yeah, finally having uh, this sponsorship behind, uh, backing you uh, and not having that those money worries, which is always the biggest obstacle when it comes to being successful at this level. You know, riding that rocket ship, uh, once uh, you know you kind of get to the top and uh, competition becomes much tougher. Um, what is getting this chance, having this full-time backing, uh, TRD behind you for the first time working with Toyota, a great organization that, you know, uh, Toyota Racing Development is all in on, uh, you know, their organizations. Uh, this chance uh, to, to pretty much live your dream, finally, what does this mean to you? It, it means everything. And and that's that's really kind of what what helped um, build this this relationship between myself and Sam Hunt Racing, because, you know, initially when when I was in talks with with different teams, different manufacturers, 
Um, I was looking for what would be the right place with the most, not only the most potential for performance here in 2023, but but what what can I set myself up for for the future? Because I think you kind of have to look big picture like that. Uh, because if you're not, then then opportunities are going to pass you by when they do come up. So you have to be ready for them. And the the support that Toyota is putting into their teams, um, and they don't have too many teams uh, in in NASCAR. They've got 2311 and Gibbs in Cup, um, and then they've got Gibbs and Sam Hunt in Xfinity. Uh, and they, they have Tricon now, um, the, the newly rebranded team in the truck series. So Toyota, as far as in NASCAR by quantity is definitely the smallest manufacturer, but I think they have, they've got to have as high a budget, if not higher of a budget to, to bring, um, into the racing program as any of these manufacturers. And so they just have fewer to divide it between. Their involvement is is huge on the engineering side um, and huge for me. They have a whole um, driver performance center that is geared towards training, nutrition, sports psychology, recovery, physical therapy um, for the drivers to keep us at absolute peak, all, uh, you know, uh, optimal operating conditions. And um, I think that's really important. That's something that that they right now have a leg up on the other manufacturers in. So. Um, just everything that Toyota is bringing to the table, I feel like is, is a huge asset for Sam Hunt racing. And then, like you mentioned, they're a young team that's accomplished so much in such a short period of time that their growth is, you know, like this. So they're riding that rocket ship like you. Oh yeah. 2016 Absolutely. when they opened their doors. Yep. Yep. So I think that, that I'm exactly in the right place at the right time where I want to be right now in the series. Um, I think there's a lot of potential for this year. I think there's a lot of potential for years to come as well. So um, it, it was definitely a, a match made in heaven here b- between Sam Hunt Racing and myself. And I'm excited to, to get it started because I've talked about in these interviews in the past how hard it is being a part-time driver and trying to plug in to different teams, working with different crew chief spotters in a different series every week, racing against all guys that do it every week in the same car. Um, That's really hard. But, you know, what I hadn't put a whole lot of thought of uh, into before looking at Sam Hunt racing is, well, what's that like from the team side? A team that has rotating drivers has all those same challenges. They're just on the other end of it. And and Sam Hunt racing historically has only had a, a rotating driver lineup in in their car so not only am i going to get that consistency that i've been looking for and i think will help my performance a lot they're going to get that too um so i i suppose in in some ways my my potential has yet to be seen in a full-time xfinity ride and and so has theirs um what they can do with a single driver so um, I'm, I'm really excited to build with them and, and see where we land. It's going to be a tough year. There's a lot of great teams and drivers going for the playoffs. So that's going to be tough to make, but I do have a lot of confidence in our team that, um, there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to. Well, when you talk about, you know, having that security this year, having solid teammates, it's going to be a two car team, although the, the second car is going to have some revolving drivers of which, uh, Connor, uh, uh, Mesak and, and Tyler Reddick are going to share. Um, but uh, it can only lead to more success, more to uh, bounce off of and, and, and to, to, to share uh, situations and talk about what, you, what your, your particular car is doing. Once you said, as you said, Toyota is not heavily involved, but they are heavily involved within the organizations they support because they want to win. They've showed that year in and year out. And uh, it's nice to see them get behind you along with, uh, you know, a full time sponsor that's going to keep you on the track week in and week out. Yeah, Toyota has been great so far, and um, they're a little bit different than the other manufacturers. They want to win with all of their cars. They, you know, they're not content to have a Toyota team that runs mid-pack and a Toyota team that runs at the back of the pack, so long as they have one that runs at the front. They only want to have teams that run at the front. So if you look at their teams across all three series in NASCAR, They're good teams, competitive teams. There's not a single one that's just, you know, out there showing up at the track every week or collecting, you know, prize money for for being at the back of the races. 
Toyota doesn't put their, their support into a team like that. They're only there to contend up front. So yeah, they've got a lower number of cars, but a really, really potent group and competitive group that do run the Toyota badges on them. And I think that's a really, really cool and admirable way to operate. And having that Joe Gibbs, uh, you know, name behind you too, when it comes to engines and other technical support uh, has got to be an added plus. Absolutely. Uh, let's talk a little bit. You know, I, I noticed Sam Hunt Racing opened his doors in 2016. That's when you burst upon the scene somewhat in NASCAR. But I was looking through your bio a little bit today and a lot of interesting things. A lot of youngest firsts coming up through your your uh, racing career. Starting, uh, you know, you started very young in go-karts at, uh, at the go-kart track at F1 at Braintree, I believe, and winning races, you know, as single digits age and beating adults and other kids. But you really burst upon the scene uh, when you were 14 years old, moved down south, uh, won a race at Hickory Speedway. Uh, you know, that's a long time history, uh, a lot of history at Hickory Speedway with NASCAR drivers coming up through the ranks there. But then, you know, in 2014, at 15 years old, you started competing in IMSA. Uh, you were the youngest to win a wheel in an All-American Series race. Uh, you won races in Martinsville and Caraway Speedway, youngest in track history. The youngest continues on. You hooked up with Kyle Busch Motorsports in 2015, 16 years old, win a race for the, uh, that organization in South Boston uh, from the pole, leading 131 laps. Uh, 2016, uh, youngest to race in the Rolex, 24, 17 years old. Uh, and then uh, you started your NASCAR career in the top three series. And, and that's when I became acquainted with your career. I was listening to the radio. The race uh, at Martinsville was on. I was out running some errands. And all of a sudden, they start talking about Kaz Growler from Boston, Mass. And I think at one point under caution, you were leading the race. And uh, I was just fixated on uh, on your race that day and having somebody local. I've been a race fan forever, but uh, really just an extra special uh, a tie to the local roots. And, uh, you know, it just continued from there. Then the full season uh, next year, come out of the gate and you win the, the race at Daytona. And, uh, but those first uh, couple of years up till then, uh, you know, that was the rocket ship. But then 2018, uh, you moved to the Xfinity Series. I want to talk a little bit about that because that's kind of where things started to level off and you, you started searching around a little bit. That organization was a young organization, and I'm not sure it was fully funded, but uh, the money dried up after having a very successful couple of months, uh, you know, top 10 finish at Daytona and uh, top 10 in the points. But uh one thing led to another. You found yourself out of a ride by um, before midseason. Yeah, just a, a little bit of unfortunate circumstances there. You know, I talk about right place, wrong time. Well, that one was wrong place, wrong time, unfortunately. Um, so I, I had that season in the truck series in 2017. One Daytona was the youngest driver to ever make the NASCAR playoffs, uh, finished seventh in the standings that year. Um, and earned an Xfinity ride, uh, team owner of, uh, I would say like a B plus level team, uh, at the time in the Xfinity series reached out to me. They weren't full, full budget. They weren't contending with RCR Gibbs, you know, junior motorsports, but they were maybe a step, just barely a shred below where Sam hunt racing is now, um, back in their day. Um, and I will also say the Xfinity series wasn't quite as deep then as it, as it has gotten now. Um, but, uh, they, they did well, you know, they were a 15th ish place team, definitely a top 20 team. And that was pretty good. And they offered me a full-time ride in the Xfinity series. Um, at the same time, um, I didn't really have any solid top level truck opportunities, um, that I was looking at for the following year. So this was by far the, the, the best move for me and gave me a chance to, to learn the Xfinity car. So I ran with that and did really well, I actually finished fourth in my series debut in Xfinity, um, got some top tens. We were looking really good. We were, um, inside the playoff bubble actually. Um, and then the team owner started to get sick. Um, and unfortunately, um, ended up after 10 races, pulling the funding out of the race team, just focusing on his own health, um, which absolutely I would have done the same thing. Unfortunately, it kind of left me, you know, out in, in the wind there because um, after those 10 races, I didn't have a ride. 
Um, and because I had a full-time contract that he, he ended up breaking for me for, for that reason. Um, my kind of my severance pay, if you will, was he gave me three Xfinity cars. <laughs> Well, I was a 19 year old kid that lives in, in an apartment. Um, I'm not sure what you're going to do with three Xfinity cars that you now own. Um, but luckily my dad, uh, owns Fury race cars, which is a late model and modified manufacturer. So they have a shop. I was able to take the Xfinity cars there <laughs> and I was like, well, can we, can we put some of our guys on this and, you know, go run a few more races. We've got these cars now we might as well. Um, so we did, we ran a, a few more races that year. We got top 10 in our first try actually. And then we got a top five at Daytona. Um, we got a, another top 10 at the Roval. We almost won Michigan, but that's a story for another day. That's a whole thing <laughs> in itself. But um, we, we had some really, really good runs. So while my, my climb in terms of consistently being in the seat every week had, had maybe leveled off, I would say that my, my results that year were, um, you know, among the most impressive seasons that I've had. And that's, that's kind of what got me the opportunity to drive just a couple races with RCR the next year. Um, and I was off to a slow start, I had some okay races, not didn't set the world on fire by any stretch, but finally kind of gelled with my crew chief, everything came together in my final race of that year with them. And we went, we actually, we got a top five, but we should have been even better than that because at one point in the race, we ended up going to the back and came back forward. Anyway, it was an impressive top five. So it got me a couple more races to try out with RCR the next year. Well, after just two of those races the next year, Austin Dillon got COVID. And I was unbelievably just happened to be the next guy in the pecking order that they could put in that car. Um, which I'm sure terrified them every bit as much as it terrified me putting a kid that had zero experience in cup into a COVID race that had no practice, no qualifying. I imagine that there were some higher ups at RCR that were um, uh, not too pleased with the fact that I was the next guy and well, we got nothing better to do. Let's put him in and see how he does. Well, I went out and finished seventh, which I'd say, it, it surprised me and I'm, I, I'm guarantee you it surprised them. Um, so that it was a really all of the motor racing world is what I was, yeah, you know, <laughs> a kid that had no cup experience and honestly had just kind of sporadic Xfinity experience just went out and finished seventh in a cup field. Um, not even like a plate track or anything, just a straight up race. Um, that, that was definitely out of the ordinary. And, so you talk about that rocket ship, I'd say it picked back up there. Um, and since then I've gotten more cup opportunities, more Xfinity opportunities, more truck opportunities. Um, last year I didn't race full time in anything, but I did run 30 races in total. So um, it was, it was not, a, uh, not a slow year for me. It was busy just all over the place. Now I'm gonna finally get a busy year in one place with a home with the team. Um, and that's going to be really nice. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, for, I believe four years you've spent with the, uh, Richard Childress organization, but, uh, you know, they have a lot, they provide a lot of technical help across all three series. So there was opportunities in teams that, you know, Richard Childress worked with that was looking for drivers off and on. I'm sure you saw that as a chance to help build your brand, you know, that solid company, and at least you're in, you know, equipment you can, you can count on and uh, really show your talents and, it must have taken a lot of patience to to work through those four years of not knowing, you know, where your next race might be or, you know, who you might be racing for week in and week out. But you knew that there was always a next race. It just you weren't sure where it was going to be. Yeah. Yeah. And and there were times, honestly, that, that I doubted. I don't know. Is there going to be a next race? I hope there is. I think there is. But if you don't have one on paper, then you always wonder maybe I've already raced my last race. Um, you don't want to think that way, but it's a hard sport and it can, it can definitely beat you up, um, as much or more than it can build you up. So, um, there was, there was plenty of uncertainty and I definitely questioned whether I would ever find myself back in a full-time ride. Um, but it did, that didn't deter me. That didn't, that didn't make me, you know, contend, uh, for races any any worse when I was behind the wheel it, I didn't put too much pressure on myself I just kept my head down and 
did what I knew how to do and worked as hard as I could and hoped that it would work out. And, um, it, it has right now, certainly, uh, you, you don't, you don't get to sit back and relax now. Now the real work begins because I'm in a full-time ride, but I want to stay in a full-time ride for the next year and the next year and the next year. Um, so you, you know, you certainly need to prove the, your worth and, and prove that you belong. Um, so that, that's, that's going to be my, my goal for the year. I wouldn't say I have any specific number, number of wins or number of top tens or finish in the championship. I don't have a concrete expectation or goal for any of those. Cause I really don't know how we're going to be as a team this year. Um, but I definitely have the goal to, to prove that I belong in, in, who knows what that could or will look like. Um, but that's, that's what I'm going to work towards this year. Well, you, you've certainly paid your dues and you've been really patient with uh, the Richard Childress organization, what they've been able to provide you, how you've been able to showcase your talents, you know, waiting for the right opportunity to come along now and not just and the next opportunity, but the right opportunity. And I'm sure you've had, you know, offers that you might have jumped at when you were younger, but now you, you've had a chance to see how the, the career path w- would probably uh, take shape, you know, to your to the best of your advantage. But you know, just even the last couple of years, you've started the last two Daytona 500s for two different organizations. And and I think that shows the confidence that uh, not only Richard Chillis, but other organizations that worked with him had in you and have in you, uh, you know, and now Sam Hunt taking this this next leap, uh, I think has really solidified that. And it must make you feel good that the people have, have been able to recognize your career uh, in 44 career Xfinity starts, you've got uh, 10 top 10s and, and five top five. Some some drivers spend their entire lifetime in Xfinity and don't don't put up those kinds of numbers. And uh, But you've shown that you can compete. You have the right equipment. And when you're allowed to race for wins, top fives, top 10s, not worrying about, well, we, we can't afford to put an extra set of tires on. Uh, you know, we got to hang back here because, uh, you know, we can't wreck the car. We can't mix it up. Whole different mindset coming into this season, I bet. Yeah, absolutely. And that'll be part of a balance for this year, because that's not going to be simple. I'm going to have to break out of my part time habits and I'm going to have to race for points. Um, But at the same time, what's refreshing is a lot of times you fight that aggression. You know, do I push to get one extra spot at the end of this race now and risk have, you know, ending in a crash because I don't know when my next race is now. Maybe you push because. I'm racing next week and I'm racing the next week and I know I'm going to get another shot at this. So maybe you do kind of let it, let it hang out there a little bit more and and go for it because you've got that many opportunities this year. You might screw up a couple of times, but you might hit on something a couple of times. You might grab a win. You just don't know. Um, So, so to some extent, I'm going to, I'm going to have that opportunity to, to be more aggressive but I'm also going to have to think about points. And that's something I haven't done in a while. So a um, little, little bit of new stuff for me this year. Absolutely. But it's, it's going to be fun. And it's stuff that, you know, I've, I've worked hard to be in a position where I have those challenges. So I'm, I'm more than ready for them. All right. Well, you've definitely worked hard and paid your dues, but uh, stats don't lie. And it's about time that, uh, you know, a top level organization and uh, a manufacturer has started paying attention. I know, uh, you know, they weren't afraid to brag about your stats whenever you're, you know, showing up on TV. They were, they were making a point that, uh, you know, this kid uh, knows how to save his equipment, but keep it up front and, and bring it home. And I think it's finally, you know, sunk into some of these owners. And, uh, you know, I think that the future, you know, being with Toyota, just tough. Uh, I just want to touch brief, briefly on now Kyle Bush coming over to Childress. Uh, Reddick going over to Toyota, you know, you've got a, you know, some history with Reddick, but Kyle Busch coming over to Childress, I'm wondering, you know, with him bringing his younger drivers and his truck organization, if all of a sudden there could be, you know, uh, career obstacles over there with the influence he would be having. So if that was any, you know, indication of uh, time for a career change and really take that next leap and, and look forward with a different organization and manufacturer and and kind of a fresh start with without all of the roadblocks uh, going forward and, and possibly a path up to Joe Gibbs racing in the future. Yeah, and, and Toyota definitely puts an emphasis on performance as I kind of touched on. So um, I, I think at the end of the day, 
the position I'm in, the ball is kind of in my court. I think that there's definitely, there's a, there's a clear visible path to the top from here. It's not an impossibility. Uh, it's not easy, but uh, it exists. And as a driver, that's all you can ask for. Be in a position where you can get there. Um, then it's just down to you making it happen. And um, that those are the moments that we live for as a driver. That's why we do what we do. We're competitive. We're aggressive. You know, you, you got to make your own opportunities. And um, I feel like I'm in a position where right now, if I do, um, there's, there's a lot of potential upside there. So, um, I think Toyota is the right place to be right now. Um, I like what they're doing, working with them. I've already been on the sim a lot, uh, this off season, working with, with all the performance, uh, men and women over at Toyota during the off season to be ready, um, physically, mentally, you know, experience wise for the season when it starts. Um, so I've gotten, I've gotten to work with all these guys. They're really good. Um, and, and they believe in us and I believe in what they're doing. I think, I think there's, um, there's a lot of potential here. So definitely excited about being with Toyota. Well, you know, the path can only, that rocket I think is about ready to reignite right now, Kaz. And, uh, having that security, it's just got to, uh, make things so settling for you at this point in the season, erase all the unknowns, uh, you know, same crew chief, uh, a, a full-time backing with a, you know, a great up and coming team. Uh, it's been a while since you've had uh, this kind of security before the first race has even started. Yeah, definitely. And um, it's, it's all been refreshing so far. So I'm excited for it. Daytona's coming up. We'll see what we can do. Yeah. We're looking forward to, I'm looking forward to seeing you down there and what you can do. I know you're going to put it up front. Toyota's are always fast on the super speedways and you've proved your worth uh, when it comes to that type of racing. I know people have kind of put you in that road racing, super speedway category, but I know there's much more to your career. And uh, I think this is the year that you're going to be able to show it. Well, thank you. Hopefully. Well, Kaz, I want to thank you for joining us here on Rivalry Family Media. I'm Bill Thomas, the Motorsports Insider. Wish you all the luck in the upcoming season, Kaz, and uh, maybe we'll get together in a couple of months and review how things are going up to that point. Yeah, yeah, let's definitely do it. Thanks for having me on today. Thank you so much.